I'm broke, so I need to fight. He walked out of the Venetian one night with a trash bag full of money. I lost millions of, 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 of dollars. If you're in business with me, don't tell me no. Happy with the amount of money that you make in the UFC right now? Yeah, I think it's fair. It's still underpaid for what it could be. Lose after one fight, they can cut you. When does a champion have leverage? When does a champion be able to get what you do to him? I've made a video about Don King. Don King signed all the top boxers to exclusive contracts. The UFC has a very similar deal. They vary in terms and length. Fighters can get their contract extended if they can't fight. There are clauses that allow champions to get their contract extended automatically just for being champions. The UFC can end the contract at any time, but the UFC fighters are not allowed to talk about it publicly without facing legal repercussions. If the fighters want to tell them what they get paid, they can. Uh -huh. But you notice none of the fighters ever do tell them what they get paid? Uh -huh. They don't tell them anything. UFC fighters get paid 15-20% to 20 of UFC revenue. This is extremely low compared to other leagues. The show and win fee is usually $12,000 and $12,000, with a chance of $50,000 in potential bonuses. Some fighters have to keep their pay job before they even pay themselves to keep any money. And only champions are allowed to have a cut of the pay-per-view money. And that is if they sell up to a specific amount of pay-per-views. Then I finally got a new contract as a champion, and I think it was 125 and 50, but I couldn't get pay-per-view points. And that's where a champion makes most of their bang for the buck, is the pay-per-view points. For us, a rookie in the NFL can make up to $900,000 a year. UFC champions get paid considerably less than that without counting pay-per-view points. But back then, they used to be able to have sponsorships. But the UFC ended that by signing a six-year deal with Reebok, reducing the money for the fighters. And do not forget, none of the other sponsors are giving the fighters any money. Reebok is giving the fighters money through the UFC. However, the Rock's shoe deal, Prime, Crypto.com, DraftKings, Modelo, and a ton of more sponsors are not giving fighters any money. All this goes straight to the UFC. We can't quit. We can't leave and they can fire us anytime. 40 months, 40 months contract. By, the, by 20 months, they will come to negotiate. A little bit more money if you say yes. Yeah. Then they are giving you a new 40 months, which means they start over. Because of that, because of the money that they had, but because uh, by that time your value is like maybe two or three times what they are offering, mm -hmm. you know. But I mean, you're kind of like broke, you're struggling, and then uh, you're seeing your next fight. Okay, fifty thousand. Uh, you have to pay this and pay that and get away with maybe twenty thousand, and you have to uh, pay your loan and all the stuff, and they have a new contract, hundred thousand. It's really hard to turn that down when you're in that position. Yeah. You know, even though you know that that's not your value, but you see, you're cornered. You're money. cornered almost. I was just trying to hurry up and get out of it, you know, but like life happens and, and you got kids and, and uh, you know, it took a lot longer than I thought it would. And um, because, you know, at the time you're like, oh, I'm going to rip through this. You know, eight fights, that's nothing. I got this. We've been trying, us and his management team have been trying to get him help for some time now. Actually, the cops were called to my location about a year ago, around this time. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just, he, we've been trying all year for him to get help, and he refuses. And I love that feeling because it's real. That's the most realest feeling that you could ever have. Is being in pain because everything else, happiness could be fake, crying could be fake, but pain, shit, that's real. And it's your husband? Yeah, it's my husband. What's so that's his what name? I'm saying. I just want to let you guys know he's a professional fighter because one, I don't want no cop to get injured or anything. Yeah, we don't. Just send one. No, we don't help. want anyone to get hurt. Um, oh, what's no. your What's your husband's name? Tony Ferguson. You guys have no idea. When you're hurt, how do you feel? You lay down, right? take a second you go you know you take your vitamins you do your thing when i'm hurt I, I love it now let's take a quick look at the nfl since i already mentioned them both of these sports mma and the nfl are at risk of cte which is the highest risk that comes with a combat sport 
Now I'm not gonna go into all the details because I already made a video about it that came out last week so you can check that out. I wanna focus more on the financial side of compensating for set CT that we already know it's happening. The NFL pays about 50% of its revenue to their athletes. This is way more than double than what the UFC offers. They rely on full teams and not on individuals, which gives them a stable income. Fighters only get to fight a few times a year. Make it MMA, completely unpredictable. A football player might have 17 games a year. Still not a huge amount of games when you compare sports like baseball, basketball, hockey, but it is a lot harder on the body. Now let's look at boxing. Boxers can make, new boxers can make between $1,000 to $4,000 a fight. And now the average boxer makes between $19,000 to $50,000 a year. And only 1% of boxers are earning in the millions. Now in most events, this goes to the main event. And even in most main events, this pretty much goes to one of the boxers. The revenue is theirs, it's not mine. I'll provide a service. I shouldn't own the revenue that Anthony Joshua brings to a fight. Now look, Jake Paul is a boxer and he's also a promoter. So just like the UFC takes a huge cut, so does Jake Paul. But Jake Paul also has to put up with the overhead of putting the entire show. So he deserves that money, even though it might seem like a ludicrous percentage. And look, in the history of combat sports, pay-per-view has always been the main source of revenue. But Dana White, along with a couple other people, broke that model and shook it to its core. You couldn't sit him, it's like Deontay Wilder and Francis Ngannou out there running him out there about free agents. Let's just sit him down and find out the economics of the fight game. Hmm. They could not tell you step number one. Well, you're gonna sell some tickets. Okay, but the venue is only so big. What happens when the tickets are gone? Well, then we're gonna go, they, they don't know it. Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting there and you're trying to negotiate, you don't even know what it is you're talking about. It's one of these, it's just one of these situations in life, right? I mean, there's a reason it's called a business. Some of it's none of yours. If you remember back then, the UFC held half as many events. So there was half as many fighters, fights taking place. And on top of that, the events that were aired, it was the fighters that were on Spike that basically got all the sponsorship money. So there was a series of dark matches that you were on lucky Facebook. to get. Some, yeah, Facebook or whatever. You were lucky to make much money on that. You made about as much or less than often what the Reebok deal pays for a lot of fighters. Francis, are you getting more money from sponsorships than fights right now? Okay. Is it is it four, uh, five, ten times more? Uh -huh. Is it ten times more? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Got it. it could be. Most fighters have the income from Benham. Some do receive sponsorships from Munster. Stake.com are allowed to sponsor fighters, but notice how they have to get cleared. Now, Crypto.com used to hand out bonuses, and they stopped with the whole with the whole crypto debacle. But a fighter still gets 50% of the sale of the NFT if they do sell one. And even though you can't get sponsorships within the ring, you can get sponsorships outside the ring. Now this is not terrible, this is actually very positive for fighters, and this is more than what some WWE wrestlers can do, so it's not bad. When you walk from the locker room to the octagon, when you walk from the octagon back to the locker room, here's the approved brands. Any other time that you'd like to do it, and on fight week, the media comes out and the guys that are good of it are going to get a lot of camera time. And if they can parlay a lot of camera time into sponsorships, they can do anything they want. Nobody gets banned. Can, can I hire, like, let's just say if I'm a company, can I hire you to do a commercial on TV? Can I do that? Yeah. Okay. So then there is, so, so then it means, then that means that there's an opportunity to have better managers to manage talent to get things on TV. So and some do receive locker room bonuses, which is not often talked about. After I had lost to Jones, Lorenzo Fertitta gave me a million dollars. Him and Dana gave me a million dollars. They actually called me and they said, we're gonna give you a million dollars, DC. And you know what they did after that? You know what happened after I fought uh, Rumble Johnson? I won the belt and I got paid $300,000. And the pay-per-view sold 300000 And you know what they did after that? They gave me $400,000 to make sure that I made a million dollars. DC told me a oh, million man, one time. Yeah, I got a million. You got a million? I got a million, yeah. You just, yeah. Op you just opened them in my mailbox? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, what fight was that? Um, I got one for, actually, I got it twice. I bet Henderson and Melendez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, like, during all that time, man, like, till you got all the sponsors that come with that. Also, then on mailbox checks, too, so. So it seems like the UFC can choose to pay you a lot of money or not. But are there other promotions paying more? Well, no and yes. Our fighters will be receiving 50% of 
the revenue. There is evidence that from court documents, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that suggests that 46% of their, basically their revenue goes to, towards their fighter pay. PFL and Bellator have been notable to pay $8,000 per show and $8,000 per to win to their fighters or even less. In one championship, you can even see $1,300 to show and to win. Overall, the show and win money, it's less than the UFC. However, some of these also offer great prices of a million dollars most of the time by just winning a tournament, for example. No need to self-promote, no need to become a character, no need to do anything other than being the best in the ring at that tournament. And that is a lot more money than what some USC fighters are getting paid. In fact, more than what 80 or 90% of USC fighters are getting paid. Yeah, yeah. All, with all, when all is said and done after the first season, when I obviously I plan on winning, I'll, 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 I'll be a multimillionaire, I'll say that. In one PFL fight that you'll have, how many UFC fights combined equal that one PFL fight? <laughs> Multiple? Yeah, multiple, yeah. The United Fight League offers insurance and retirement plans. And the more competition that it keeps coming, the nicer things that, come, do, that do come for fighters. However, if these other promotions do decide to pay fighters, it's not because they want to, it's because they have to, to be able to compete and get fighters from the UFC and other major combat sports. A fighter pay problem in, U, in, in MMA? Or is there just a fighter pay problem in UFC? Yeah, what's your solution to fighter pay? I think the fighter pay is just in UFC. Speak to me about this idea that basically you lock in fighter income at around 18% of gross profit and a lot of other sports closer to 50%. And a lot of your fighters say, hey, we'd be happy for something more than 18%. Why can't we get it? In 2019, on average, every UFC fighter generated about $800,000 to the UFC and about $80,000 percent of Veltor. Now, 20% of $800,000 is $160,000. Now, even if Veltor decided to pay 100% of the $80,000 to their fighters, it still wouldn't be able to compete against the UFC. And now imagine if the UFC were to increase their pay from 15% to 50% of their revenue, that means that the average fighter would be able to make $400,000. And imagine on top of this, you add benefits? Nobody would be able to compete against the UFC. So in a way, the UFC is keeping the sport alive in a weird, twisted way. It's just such a big monopoly that if they do, that if they actually decide to pay their fighters more, it would somehow become even more of a monopoly and they would make less money. So why would it ever happen? That's the problem I have when people talk about, oh, we're gonna give fighters 50%. It's like magically we'll just triple everybody's pay. But it doesn't work that way. You can't just triple everybody's pay because what pushes wages up is competition. Every sport, it's always competition. People will talk about, oh, because baseball had a union, that's why wages went up. No, baseball had a union, wages were going down. Matchmaking would be hell since the fighters will still ask for more, just like in boxing. NFL players are available for healthcare if they play more than five years in the league. The average NFL career is three years. That these guys are profiting, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year, and they're worried about paying for, you know, the same insurance that we make a guy who gets up on a ladder and paints a house has to get for his work. The UFC does kind of have something for their fighters in the UFC PI. And this is something that the UFC does not get enough credit for. Now, the UFC fighters do decide to pay some money for fight-related activities, even if they're not as scheduled to compete soon. And I know the word of a union has been mentioned a lot, but a union only really works if somebody works every at least 30 hours a week, which for these sports, it kind of happens. However, for the UFC, it doesn't. So what can the fighters do? I want to make a whole video about what fighters can do, but it's fairly simple. It is not a lack of money per se. I think Francis Ngano put it best. You're kind of like broke, you're struggling, and then uh, you're seeing your next fight, okay, 50,000, uh, you have to pay this and pay that and get away with maybe 20,000, and you have to uh, pay your loan and all this stuff, and they have a new contract, 100,000. I think it all boils down to financial literacy. My real estate, Got about 15 houses now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. So a lot of people always like bitch about like fighter pay and stuff, but I'm just like, what are you doing with your money? Right, right. You know, if you go to uh, like some of these people's like Instagram like, who bitching about fighter pay, go to their Instagram and see what it is that they're spending their money on. You yeah. Have, like five Frenchie dogs. These are like 
five to eight thousand dollar dogs, of course you're gonna be broke. And Lord, I wanna make so many videos about financial literacy for people like this, but put it plain and simple, if you are able to be smart with your money, you are able to come across the finish line as long as you're not blowing money. The issue is people will think that they have more money than they actually do because of a big paycheck up front and you don't. And it's like, at the end of the day, you guys are fighting twice a year, once a year, and y'all mad because you only made like thirty, forty thousand dollars that year. Bruh, you made thirty to forty thousand dollars off one fight. If you fought twice, you made eighty thousand dollars. But other than that, they should remain in good terms with the UFC just because it's the highest level. We have an incredible relationship with Darren Till. We like him and we respect him very much. And obviously, we wish him the best. And, and if he gets to a level where he thinks he's ready to come back to the UFC, yeah, we would probably do it. And most, important, and most importantly, understand how the business works. I feel like a lot of people do not understand that. I think there's not enough research being done on how MMA is working and how PFL can be a better option for some fighters, how one championship can be a better option for some fighters, how Bellator even can be a better option for some fighters, as long as you know what you're doing. Authentically. Now it's up to the fighters, in my opinion, to learn content, to learn media presence, and to learn oh, how to fuck hot. to sell their Jakey. own fights. Hire a videographer. Yo, ironically, hire ironic, an ironic. editor. Now, for me, I have been able to monetize things outside of just my fights. And, and it's never the guys who are out there having their own YouTube channel, getting roles in movies, building building fitness and wellness lifestyle programs, selling merch, doing all of the different things that we, that we can do as fighters because we are independent contractors, we can do whatever we want. Some fighters have even been able to fight outside of the UFC while in UFC contracts. Still under UFC contract. I still have three fights on that deal. How did you let them, how did they, how did you get them to let you do this? My managers figured it all out. I, I didn't really ask too much. Was it tough? Because I, I mean, you know this, historically they don't usually allow these yeah. things to happen. Heck yeah. No, I don't think it was too tough, man. And I, I, mean, I, I honestly expected a hell no, like right. not going anywhere, but they, they were super cool about it. They're like, look, we're not going to keep you from making this type of money for your family. Dana White and the UFC have done a lot for the people within their sport. I was poor. I was homeless. My brother that died, I didn't have enough money to pay for his funeral. The UFC paid for that. I'll always be loyal to him and thankful to him. Thank you, you know, Dana. Thank you, Sean, for all the things you guys have done. Joe Pfeiffer spoke very highly of you and said that you'd got him a house and you'd given him some money outside the Contender Series. I'm curious why you did that and what exactly is it about Joe Pfeiffer that you like so much and wanted to help out? Um, I do a lot of things for a lot of people that I don't necessarily talk about. Uh, Joe Pfeiffer, when I walked, when I left the press conference that night, he told me that he was he was about to be homeless. So that ain't gonna happen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna donate a million dollars to the people, the families, and the people who are affected by this. I think that every casino on the strip sh should should dig in and, and help. He put a GoFundMe over for his boxing coach, whose 15-year-old daughter is, is is battling cancer, and he said he's gonna donate half of his fight purse to support him and, and her in this battle against cancer. He can keep his 10 grand and I'll do his show and his win and I'll donate it to his coaches. It's always about rooting against the big guy. And I respect that in a way. But also you gotta be honest to yourself and not blame everything on somebody else. You gotta take the charge. And if you wanna see how Don King took the charge and screwed everybody over, you can watch the video right there. And if you wanna see who the highest paid fighters were last year, Check out this video right here, and I'll see you in that video. See ya! It's all on the coat, ballin' now, skirt down, all of these starving soap. Bought them for me with the yours now. You could drink it, but take it slow. Ballin' for you, fallin' for you.